Hi, this is Chrissy Chu from Co-Impact Lounge. And today I have a very special surprise for you. We have with us here, Dominic Ho, who's an artist, a Web3 creative consultant, and a senior art director in the advertising industries. Having worked on huge brands like Samsung, Netflix, and Singapore Airlines and the likes, uh, but today we're here to talk about something a little bit more, well, exciting, should I say, because having done digital art festivals in the past, he's also planning surprise for the later half of this year. Today's focus is all about introducing NFTs and art. With the rise of NFTs today, we really want to find out more about this area and to help us do that is none other than the expert in this field, well, <laughs> Web3 creative consultant, Dominic Ho. Oh. He was the first cohort in Glasgow School of Art in Singapore. He's always had this real passion for mixing up tech and art together, ever, even from the very beginning. So whatever he says here has been researched, has been explored and experimented with a couple of times, even if he's so humble and he's not going to call himself an expert, I sure am going to bless him with, with this type of... <laughs> uh, sure. Thank but you, thank um, you. Um, tell us a little bit more about yourself, right? Something that we cannot find yeah. on. Yes, like uh, Chrissy said, uh, I come from the advertising industry and uh, whether I like it or not, I was there for very long, <laughs> say about 10-ish years. And I've been working on stuff for brands and helping them uh, sell themselves and market themselves. But over time, like as a creative, and I'm sure like uh, uh, other creatives can resonate with this, like you want to create something for yourself. Yeah. No matter how cool the thing you are making for a brand, it's still not yours. That's why, uh, yeah, hence my exploration into the NFT world because I felt it lowered the barrier of entry significantly. It's easier because you don't really need to know something. You just need to get on Twitter or Twitter Spaces or Discord or even... Telegram as well and Twitter. Yeah, yeah. It significantly lowers the barrier of entry and then... Uh, you can get your work out there so much faster because all it needs is just a few clicks. And with initiatives, like say First Mint Fund, you don't even need to pay for your mint. Like people might sponsor it, yeah, if they like it. And that sort of like creates this whole community about sharing uh, art and what art is. So a little bit more about myself, like after discovering NFTs, I decided... Uh, my friend actually showed me and introduced me this whole idea of like the metaverse and NFTs and I thought it was really cool because it felt like it came straight out of a sci-fi novel <laughs> and sadly it's not. <laughs> uh, we, are, we are nowhere near there because of limitations of technology but maybe this is just the first step and um, it got me excited and it gave me a reason to want to create something uh, well, myself, it just gave me an excuse because if I were to make something on my own, there's almost no reason to, to be honest. And sometimes with the monetary incentive of being able to sell your work, yeah, that, that is quite a fair bit of motivation to be very honest. Yeah, and then uh, this friend uh, asked me to help him organize together uh, this festival called Crypto Art Week Asia. And then, uh, yeah, that's how everything started. And this was like uh, late. 2020 so we got together over beers and just started talking and uh yeah january it happened yeah and then i like went down the rabbit hole of like nft art and crypto and whatnot i mean i already had an interest in crypto so i think that progression is kind of natural yeah just with this passion and this interest for art and tech and well, art marrying tech combined, you know, you've actually just really, you say it quite simply gone down the rabbit hole, but you've really created a full culture and made quite a, a, a brand for yourself as well in this area. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you give me too much credit. Yes, I think like, um, not say who doesn't know. I think a lot of people don't know. And I think that's that's all right. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I'm just happy to do what I, I do. Because I feel that like 
why why I give myself web three consultant? I think I'm a very horrible one at that, to be very honest. Because uh there's a lot of uh misconceptions and a lot of like scammers in the space. And honestly, why I say I'm a very horrible web three consultant is that when people ask me, do I need to do an NFT? I ask them, do you need to do an NFT? Because do you really need 10,000 pictures of something to sell your product? I mean, I mean that's, that's seriously a business question because you need to understand the, the repercussions of it. It's not so much of, whoa, like here is out there and how are you going to sustain it? How is it going to impact your business in the long run? Or how is it going to be integrated into what you're selling? Yeah, so I think that's what people don't ask. And as you can see, like when you do things one-off, people will just view it as a cash grab. And honestly, it's not going to do the brand or your personal brand any good. Yeah. And it's just going to be like jumping on a bandwagon. I mean, we can talk more about that later. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we've gone very, very focused very, very quickly. Um, but, you know, th this is really interesting, the way that you actually positioned it from, from a business point of view. Everybody really looks at it from, uh, I hate to say this, but NFTs as memes and, you know, as things that people buy and flip. Uh, yeah. I hate to say that, but, you know, NFT art really hasn't grown in this area the way that you're actually trying to describe it to be but can you give me a little bit of a, a background on where you see nft as what it could be and where it's going today does that make sense yeah i yeah it does it does so, so I, i'm i'm gonna answer this question but not in the same order <laughs> so i think uh for nft to grow people would need to see it less of a financial tool like not as a financial tool like art is, but less of a financial tool where I buy it and I instantly get 100 times of what I spent. That's what yeah. it's a flipper, right? Yeah. So, and this actually creates this very um, meme-like culture around it. Like you say, FPS memes. I mean, I won't say memes are bad because I still think memes are art and they are like a, a way of like documenting culture. How it is now, it's that uh, people are just doing it for the sake of like doing it and getting the most out of almost nothing. And I think this is now a very good time to talk about this because crypto has crashed. Let's face it. Money is going down. And when the money is gone, right? It's not as great, right? People start to think about purpose. Like how can this uh, benefit me as an artist, as a brand? Uh, as a business owner, yeah, and that will actually help move things forward, because uh, at the end of the day, like like we should always remember what an NFT is. That NFT is not the artwork. The NFT is just the token that governs the artwork, which is the certificate of uh authenticity or certificate of ownership. Say like a house deed, like you know when you buy a house. The NFT is not the house. The NFT is the, the deed. The artwork is the house, yeah. So, or COE of a car. Yeah, COE with a car, but that expires in 10 years. So it's true. <laughs> yeah, so when we start thinking of the tech like that, so we look at it tech first rather than money first, then the space will grow. Then we can find uh, more users for it, not just as artists, but also as brands, as businesses and how it can benefit how we push your own thing forward. So let's use art as an example. If you just think about money, of course, you can just make a 10K collection of profile pictures of animals of your choosing, by the way. But uh, you think of it as a tool, like to one, see who has collected your work, two, maybe create a community around your collectors and around your fans, basically. And three is to, I mean, get paid when it gets resold so that solves a huge problem in the art world because currently when your work gets resold from a gallery you won't see a cut of it and honestly you still do earn, you still do put in a lot of effort just to make something so your work still appreciates with you as an artist but you don't see that payoff but with this whole nft smart contract using the blockchain thing you get to 
still get that cut of royalties. So it makes like tracking easier because one, the buyer can choose to remain anonymous with the wallet and you still get the money. Yeah. This is a huge incentive for artists, to be honest. And this helps like say even galleries keep track of like who is buying from them or like what are their buyers profile like. So there's a lot of data with the wallet and this can help with marketing. I mean, as a marketing and advertising professional, yeah, data is always there to help us target our the intended audience because why target everybody when you just target the people that matter, right? And I think this is how it should be in the future, especially when things get more digital, the world gets smaller, people get more connected. You don't want to target everybody because targeting everybody means targeting the whole world. That's like way too many people. But you, you honestly just want to spend your effort and look at people that matter, people who like your work. Because, and you want to reward them, right? And this is not just for traditional art. Think about it as uh, musicians, like even record labels can do that. So why just limit it to art, yeah? That's right. If you target everybody, you target nobody. That's Yeah, <laughs> yeah and the other thing with NFTs is that it's in a digital space, right? And I say there's so much data that goes along with it. I mean, it opens up new channels because now, Although we are, we are still at the start, because it just got popular, people are just exploring like videos, uh, illustrations, and like GIFs and like pixel art. But think about it a little bit more. Now, now you have all these like variables yet. So can you make interactive art? Because I mean, way back then there's Flash and I, I would say that was actually a very high point in creativity in the internet because with Flash, it was so easy to use. and Everybody could just like make what they want, you know, without without uh shame. I mean, some some things were quite questionable, but people just created and created and created, and you see that in this space right now. So you just create and create and create, yeah. And suddenly, everyone went, took a step back, and we became single page scrolling sites. <laughs> That's really sad. It might look really pretty, but the interactivity is gone. That that play is gone. That playfulness is gone so I think the world became a little bit more boring at least the online world because of yeah. the, the marketing strategies of funnels and landing pages yeah and- once we shift that right from like say just flash was used for brands anyway last time so now you shift that into the hands of artists and it's not flash anymore but interactive art or interactive digital art so it can be AI generated it can be something you can play with but now you can add a tool to buy and sell it and like to for people to collect it and I mean at the end of the day people buy what they like like why why do some people buy sneakers or bear bricks it's just because they like it it's, that's that's all there is like yeah and I mean they are collectors too but yeah if you make something that's fun and you can say like it's for sale if I really like it I'll buy it to support the artist and I, I have collected some uh, pieces like uh, some photography pieces, some, uh, I think I have, did I have an interactive piece? I think I did. I, I might have sold it away by accident, right? <laughs> yeah. So it, it was very exciting because now you can like collect all these interesting things and at the same time, like you can support the person that made them and that's a very nice thought. Yeah. Yeah. Like and, I, uh, I really like to, to pause there because um, in our earlier conversations, that was the part that really touched me, you know, it stood out to me. It's, it's not just about, you know, like you say, you know, it's, it's about pushback, it's about creative freedom, it's about getting your work out there, it's about this extra channel of income. And all this is good because it also helps us to then get really grounded about art and design and, and experimentation. Yeah. But you, you mentioned two things that really stood out to me. And I just wanted to highlight this because I want to acknowledge you for that. Recognizing that you are, as an artist, always putting work out yeah. to get feedback. After that, you can also then look at it from a, you know, a blockchain point of view and looking at a smart contract as a tool and not as an investment, so to speak. But yeah. where it really matters is you're creating art for community to then come together, to then be able to feed off each other's energy yeah. and to grow that community as an art community. 
where there never was one for digital assets. Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah, it it is, and I think, but that is still uh okay. Okay, the cynical part of me now now speaks because okay, there's still one point that I want to acknowledge yeah. you for that I just before you even <laughs> talk about cynical because you are not you are the person that goes out there and really impresses it upon the world that when you see art pieces that you enjoy and you like you buy them to yeah. make the artist feel well recognized and appreciated. Yeah, I don't think I've ever seen anybody or met anybody that's put aside some capital every month to go out there to make people feel more welcomed in this art space. Yeah, it's actually very common in the NFT space. Like some people who made some sales, they use the money just to buy back maybe their friends' work or like work that they like. And honestly, for me, it doesn't have to be expensive. Don't think of art like, oh, it's going to be a few thousand dollars. I mean, there's still uh, blockchains like Tezos or Solana. And they're more affordable. And honestly, the stuff on Tezos, right, it's really, really cool. Like, they're more experimental in nature. So I really love the stuff there. And yeah, I, I just told myself, like, since I made some Tezos sales, uh, I don't intend to, to withdraw the money anyway. It's cost is quite cheap. Eh? It's not an uh, expensive way to make someone's day, to be honest. So yeah, I just say, like, oh, show me your work and, like, just one of those shill threads on Twitter be the person I dislike <laughs> and then get people to share their work. But sometimes I do get really nice stuff and really interesting work. And I see like, oh, oh, that's like 0 0.5 Tezos, which is a dollar. I'm just going to buy it. And like, I'm not going to think so much. I'm just going to buy it. I eat. Yeah, but imagine you buy it, then someone across the, the globe they say, oh, I got a sale. I, I made this. It's, it still brightens their day. Like recently, I, I just sold something that I made in September. Uh, yeah, it, it still made my day. <laughs> yeah. It's not expensive. It, it was like 0 0.01 EVE. I think now it's like $20 or something. It's, it's not about the money. Yeah. It's, it's about like uh, that, that recognition. Like, oh, someone likes your stuff. And honestly, it's a very human thing. Like, if you hear, say, your friend telling you, hey, that stuff you made is cool. Or, like, if you hear your boss saying, hey, that's really nice. Like, I love it. You'll feel happy. And with this, like, whole virtual communities, like, you earn the money. And I see a lot of artists doing it. They buy works that they like. It, it does create this uh, like economy. Like yeah. Yep. I mean, whether it's sustainable or not, it's not this is not that conversation. But I do think that yeah, it, it's uh it creates this economy, uh artists get noticed and it still builds their confidence. And I would say, like, to be very honest, like NFT art or the NFT space, right? It shouldn't be the only space that you function as an artist or creative. It should be one of the channels I say. Uh I mean, because you feel confident, yeah more willing to put your work out there and maybe it gives you that confidence to go pitch for that job that you like or that brand that you like and then maybe uh, say you're an illustrator then you see a brand like say Belvini the whiskey brand and suddenly you get that confidence because people like your work you say hey why don't you want to do this or like, or like when they approach you because someone saw something that someone bought like why don't you do this like Sure, <laughs> like, and then you actually get paid for, for doing what you like by a big brand and it's still, it's still all that recognition and I mean, it's great. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, to be honest, like, don't, don't just focus on NFT, but focus on yourself as a as creative. An yeah, as an artist and um, the NFT space is just one small aspect of it because I think as creatives, you got to be more holistic. 